Hi, great to see you. Come on in just in time for your Capricorn September 2020 tarot reading and forecast. I'm Nigel St. James, as you know, great to see you subscribers back again. We have great fun here on this channel, don't we? We have great fun. We have great readings. They're different. They're good. And of course, I've had the very great pleasure of doing personal readings for some of you over the course of the last month. And if you'd like to have a personal clairvoyant reading with me, then just check out the information which is in the description box below and you'll see how easy it is for that to happen. Anyway, let's get things underway. I'm going to draw five cards. Incidentally, the developer of this deck has, the artist has provided a Capricorn card. So we'll have a look at that in just a moment. But I'm going to draw five cards as is our usual practice because that's all we need here. And uh, that will give us a very good in-depth uh, understanding as to what is going to be happening and the energies which are around. So let's see what there is. The Lovers. Now, the this deck is, is no longer in print. It, um, it is, a, I'm told, apparently drawing uh, huge bids on second-hand um, markets like eBay, if it comes up at all. Most people, of course, there's the Ten of Cups. If it comes up, the artwork is quite astonishing, as I think you'll agree. It's collage art. Does that mean anything to you? Collage? It's like apparently, it, well, it is difficult to do. I'm not an artist myself, but it is difficult. All I'll say is that it works. And it was given to me by a witch um, or a wise woman who said it would have a great resonation with me. And of course, she was right. There's the Three of Swords, as she is with so many other things. And uh, so I will not be selling it. If anything, I will be giving it away, probably to, what's this, the King of Swords, probably to my daughter, who is also clairvoyant. And uh, when the time comes, that is when I'm going to shuffle from this mortal coil, but I have no intention of doing that just yet, as I have a few more things to do, places to see, people to meet, fun to have. So, well, this is sliding out. So why don't you give it the benefit of the doubt and say that it's there and why not? Because it's the ace of coins for you. Come on around, sit down next to me, have a look at these cards while I do the reading for you. Incidentally, next month's uh, reading will be published on Wednesday, the 9th of September at 2 p.m. US Eastern time. I'll pin a note to the comments section. Now here's the card for Capricorn that this developer has, or the artist has provided. You very often don't see a astrological card in the sign. That's what the back of the cards look like for those people who are interested to see what backs of cards look like. They're always interesting in some respect, I think. Now here's a, here is an interesting um, depiction of Capricorn, isn't it? Now, although it's not, I'm only showing it to you, but although it's not strictly part of the reading, I am getting an energy from it which says, strip everything to the bare bones. This is about restriction, discipline, cut everything out that is frivolous or excessive just at the moment. Frivolous, that is, without, you know, joy, things that are, don't really have much point of view, um, don't have anything to really add to you because if you want to build something, build something big, you can't let yourself get distracted. Keep your eye on the finish line and nothing else matters. Now, this is an interesting depiction of Capricorn here. It seems like it's half goat and half fish. Well, the mystical sea goat is what the sign of Capricorn is, half fish and half goat. So it's, Capricorn is not dry and lacking in magic as sometimes, maybe at first glance, who don't get to know Capricorns very well might think. Now with Capricorn, I guess what we have is this thought for you, I think, that you must discipline your mind and your body and your routine. You must find endurance sexier than tempestuousness. And then you must work within your tradition rather than trying to mm, 
reinvent things or disrupt things. I mean, you can survive on gravel and ash, but there's no need for you to do that this month, because this is a great deal of emotional rebirth, I think, here, and good material prospects as well. Let's look at these material prospects first up. Here is the Ace of Coins. You go, Ace, are you in focus? I have to say that I'm getting a lot of Taurus and Gemini and Aries around here. This is the root of the powers of the earth. It's talking about, I think in this position, the beginning of something tangible. Prosperity compared to where you have been and growth moving forward. M material abundance, I think, coming about, starting to improve your finances. Now, there may possibly be a promotion, a new job, or a pay rise. It's really a good luck card, I think, for, for me in this position here, and one where there is unexpected value, unexpected money or, or items in lieu of money being received by you. Aces represent new beginnings and opportunities, and in the suit of coins here, it relates to your work, to projects or business things. But there are other things here in nature as well. This bird coming around, and it may be the beginning of a new understanding of yourself from the observation of nature, its seasons, and its content. The Ace of Coins, I think, here represents and mirrors your readiness to live a life that is inwardly and outwardly rich. All that is needed is already at hand. There is nothing you cannot be, there is nothing you cannot do, there is nothing you cannot have. You are the most magnificent, the most remarkable, the most splendid being God has ever created. For who could reject such wondrous magnificence? But you do not know who you are, and you think you are a great deal less. You are your own rule maker, and you are the only one who can assess how you are doing. All you see in the world is your idea about it. Life will take off for you when you choose for it to. An idea becomes a thought. A thought becomes a word. Say it out loud. Words have power. A word becomes an action. And if you are going to do it, start. Then go all the way. Do it. Do it. Do it. Seize the opportunity that this card is presenting to you. Rejoice in it and let no power on earth take it from you. Let's see what else there is. Uh, here we have uh, an interesting line along here. The Lovers and the Three of Swords. They're to do with emotions. This is to do with thoughts about of emotions. Let's have a look at this first. Any reason why? These are asking to be read in a particular way, I think, given this Ten of Cups that's up in this corner here. Let's have a look at the three first. This is Saturn in the second decan of Libra, the third to the twelfth of October. Now, in ordinary astrology, Saturn is exalted in Libra, and so we'd expect really good stuff. But with this three here, I also have a mystical association with the planet of Saturn as well. And so in a sense, we have Saturn in Libra and Saturn again. So there is a double dose of Saturn that's coming in here. So it's possible that at some stage during the month you may feel some sort of a heartbreak or some emotional pain. And of course, we all have emotional pain and we all have a degree of sorrow about one thing or another, momentarily at least. Remember one thing, of course, that sorrow and joy are actually the same thing. You can be sure that when you are sitting down at your table with sorrow, Joy is actually asleep on the couch in the other room and ready to burst in. So don't be off put by things of emotional pain or mental anguish or, or even endings of relationships or anything like that. 
I'm not suggesting that your current relationship is going to end, but very often we carry baggage from previous relationships, don't we? Now, this Three of Swords is its asking me to read it in this way, that the Three of Swords is actually quite closely related to the Two of Swords that precedes it, which represents two coming together in an additive way. Whenever two come together, a third is quickly born. This third can have a stabilizing or a destabilizing effect, and sometimes both. The birth of a new child, for example, both taxes the couple and strengthens their bonds. Now, love triangles are often highly unstable, whereas bringing in a therapist to work with a couple is an example of the third party helping to balance and strengthen two who are not quite in harmony. I think what this energy is compelling me to say is that you must find the transcendent function of the third, the way it can resolve an underlying tension or polarity through greater inclusiveness. Yeah. You see, resolving tension between blind faith and doubt through the creation of a more open, tested faith, for example. Now, being in the suit of swords, I think this card relates to transcending fixed ideas and positions. Now, you might find here in the image, there is a, like a flower on the top here. Think of yourself like a butterfly. Just as the butterfly goes from one flower to another, gathering nectar from each, you can move from one point of view to another, gathering insight, gathering a more inclusive perspective and becoming freer. Now, this is true whether the different points of view are being articulated by different people or are held internally by yourself. You always have a choice about how to look at something. Noticing that you are stuck in a familiar thought pattern and stepping back to gain a larger perspective is tremendously helpful. I think what this is saying is that this is a good time to look at what is happening at the various triangles in your life. Where are they destabilizing and destructive? Where are they adding richness and texture? And if you find yourself in a painful situation, remember that difficult situations can be great teachers. I mean, when did you ever learn anything of substance when things have gone really well from you? Perhaps this is part of an initiation. Do you know in folklore and fairy tales, a person must often undergo three tests or overcome three obstacles as part of their growth? So look for ways current hardships can serve a higher purpose. See if you can step back and take a higher point of view. And let this idea of a butterfly symbolize for you the movement from an earlier, denser form to a lighter, freer way of being. Let's have a look at this. This Knight of Swords, hello Knight of Swords, here he is, oh did I just call him the Knight, he's the King of Swords, put your glasses on Nigel, well he is the Lord of Winds and Breezes and a lot of Gemini around here and a lot of Taurus I think, because I think that you have the energy of the mind in Gemini with the influence and the stability and determination of Taurus coming into your life. Yeah. He is a man who is active, clever, skillful, fierce, and courageous, but may often be unreflective. Um, he, as the king, he represents the element of fire, and in swords, it's air, and fire and, and air get on famously, don't they? So, you can look at him as being akin to something of a windstorm or a hurricane, a tornado, forces of 
passion originating in the mind. He's talking to you about you getting a clear insight into a particular problem, maybe an emotional issue or relationship that you have, and working quickly to set goals that don't let anything get in the way. This is, I think, nevertheless, a restless period where you are transitioning and trying to get some somewhere else, either in your your everyday life or in travel or, or just about how you think about yourself or, or the people who are in your life. It's time to listen to the head rather than the heart, I think here. And I think this was talking about that as well, in a way. Do you know, this does talk to me about someone who is more comfortable in their head rather than expressing feelings. Now, I've never felt that as being the case with you, but but this night does indicate restlessness in, in all aspects of life. Maybe you want to break free from a particular way of living or a particular workplace or something like this. Now, in a relationship, this king here can represent the love-hate relationship that we often see with people where a couple will get together and they'll break up and they'll be apart and they can't live with each other and they get back together and they fight and they argue and they break up and this goes on and on and on until someone finally says, because this can be very draining in the long run, someone finally says, who wants this life? Who has signed up for this? This energy here is saying that you are in a good position now to forge plans, to set goals, and to bring them to fruition. Do you know your goal? You know, actually setting goals and the way to get to it is the only way that you can make things happen. And once, what happens once you achieve it? Imagine how you will best be able to enjoy your success and say to yourself, I have worked out and now know my goal and I know how and what I am working towards. Each goal is just a milestone on the way to my ultimate destination. Now sitting above this Three of Swords here is the card of the lovers. Let's have a look at it, shall we? Major Arcana number six. Now the lovers for me is, what would I say it is in this situation? It's Mercury ruling Gemini with Dragon's Head exalted. Dragon's Head being that north node of the moon. And I think that the meaning of this card actually centers around the reconciliation of opposites. You know, very similar to what we were talking about here, isn't it? I think that there is the need to look at all the angles before making a decision. The King of Swords was also telling you that. I think that you could well be a called upon to be a mediator or a peacemaker here. And there's a need to look at harmony in relationships. There's a need for you to make a, a major life choice on the direction ahead of you. Now, it may not seem major at the time, but when you look back, you'll say to yourself, gee, you know, that really was a, um, that really was a, a major, a major decision that I made. Could well be that there is a mutual attraction and sexual connection but this is a major arcana, so I don't see it as being a one-night stand. I think that there is really also around here choices, choices to be made, being at the crossroads of something, um, falling in love, commitment, perhaps an engagement, perhaps even choosing between lovers. But this card, you know, is, is, is actually asking me to say something further and more in depth in relation to it. There are a lot of um, car and this is another one, for example, here. There are um, several cards in the Tarot which are related to love, but this is the primary one. It really is love in the highest octave. It is the higher point of view or higher state of consciousness that comes when your heart has been transformed by love. This energy here is the meeting ground between human and divine love. It is where human love jumps up a rung on the ladder and becomes more universal 
and unlimited as is divine love and where your spiritual sensibilities inform and enrich your relationships with others. Love is about merging, about union. Of course, from the non-dual perspective, union doesn't make sense. There are no separate parts to be joined. But from our usual perspective, this is how we experience it. We are dual from other people and we seek to become one as we were before we came to Earth. This experience of union is central to both lovemaking and to contemplative and mystical forms of spiritual practice. We let go of our separate self and merge with the larger being. Now, although human love relationships can become the context for merging, we often don't take them to the furthest level. Our focus is usually our human beloved, isn't it? And safeguarding that relationship. Of course, we hold on to the other as the source of love, forgetting that it is our love that is so intoxicating. If you can claim that love as a capacity of your own heart, you will be less likely to get fixated in your attachment to particular other people. Then you become a true lover, not just within a primary relationship, but lovers, a lover of the world. Then it is no longer just the love object that evokes your love. Your heart continuously spills over with love. You become more compassionate more accessible, more easily touched. The heart is soft and tender. Sometimes it is said that the heart is broken open so that the whole world can be placed in it. In a more general way, I think this card is inviting you to explore the state of your heart and your way of being in the world. Where is your heart open? And where is it closed? Where are you turning away from love? Where in your life do you have an opportunity to develop more of the qualities of the lover? Well, let's have a look finally at this. We don't know anything else we have. Let's have a look at this 10. Well, this is really the Lord of perfected success. It is Mars ruling the third decan of Pisces, that ninth to the 19th of, of March. Yeah. Mars. Mars is disruptive and can conflict with peaceful Pisces. The general message coming up from this card is, though, I have to say that there is emotional stability. You may be beautifying your home or, in fact, moving to what is like the perfect sort of home for you at the time being. It speaks of a happy family unit and of your dreams becoming a reality. Mars in Pisces, although it can disrupt peaceful Pisces, as I say, it does also talk about satisfaction, fulfillment, radiating love. There is also a sense of a great fullness of emotional satisfaction here, almost a fullness, almost as if this cup is full and adding anything further to it is just going to have it spill over the side. So there is a great deal of emotional passion and vitality. But as this is a 10, it's a long way away from the ace and it can become at times a little bit unsteady and it is going to devolve next into the ace of swords. Now, what I think we can say here is that there might be the moment here where your happiness kind of seems a bit fleeting and short-lived or that 
there is something that you have enjoyed which is losing its ability to fulfill you. Now, in, in particular, what I have in mind here are things like consumer things. I mean, you might, for example, have gone out and said, listen, I just do have to have this pair of shoes, or I just do have to have this video game. And yet you find, after a while, that you've lost interest in the thing. You've become sort of bored with it. It's not that you're unhappy. It's not that the thing makes you unhappy, but you're bored and you want to move on to the next thing. Now, in a relationship setting, it can mean the loss of pleasure in what the relationship brings, right? Because if you're full, when I say a loss of pleasure, it's not as if it's continually getting better and better and better. It might be that you've reached the top of the cup and adding more just allows things to spill over. And so in that case, there isn't, you can't make it better by pouring more in. And so you kind of feel that, well, I'm not increasing the, the level of pleasure that the relationship brings. So therefore you either have to alter the dynamic of the relationship or enlarge the cup. Because I never ask someone to go and move on to another relationship. Because this thing is kind of a hinting at, I think, but I, I don't agree with it there, so I won't say that. As I say, it's not that you're not happy, but it's fullness. And so you may be, may be in the case that with relation to something, don't be surprised if you find that, gee, I've come to the end of what I was, the enjoyment that I was expecting to get from that. But it's a good card anyway, and does talk of emotional stability and, and enjoyment and lots of love during the period. What a great set of um, cards for you. Well done. Well done, Capricorn. Good job. Well, that's the way it is for you this month. Well, you, there you go. September 2020, another month and a step closer to the end of the calendar year. Uh, let's all keep our spirits up, shall we, during this time. I think there's some aggravation yet to happen, but you are going to be fine according to that reading and that's the most important thing and in any event i want you until next month to remember one thing always and it is this that you are a legend and i look forward to seeing you again next month until then it's bye for now